Coming up, getting up the nerve to jump through a ring of fire. A dynamic duo lend their ears to this hearing impaired couple. And this great Pyrenees pup must guard a flock she's afraid of. Just north of the Welsh capital Cardiff, Caer Philly Wales is home to an imposing 13th century castle. It's also the home of Rockwood Animals, where the dog performance troupe is rehearsing for their upcoming show. Troy, lay down, lay down, lay down. The daring ring of fire feat is the highlight. Teabag, a greyhound whippet cross, needs to gain confidence if he's to make the fiery leap and become a full-fledged member of the Rockwood team. He's supposed to join them in time for the next show. Got it. Got it. But if he doesn't pass his trial by fire, he'll sit on the sidelines. Good lad. He has just a few short weeks to build up his nerve. Good lad. Good lad. Like many of the Rockwood dogs, Teabag was rescued from a bad home. Because of Teabag's miserable past, he still lacks confidence. And sit. And Martin forward. Winfield has been working with Teabag for four months. When Teabag first came to Rockwood, he was extremely nervous. He had no self-confidence at all. And I was really concerned that anything that we'd done with him would have to be done very, very carefully because it's so easy to make a mistake with a dog like that. By doing obedience and agility, it helps the dog's confidence grow. Very good, keep it going. His owner, Teresa Alexander, coaches him gently during this last crucial stage of training. When she first met Teabag, he had cuts all over his face. He was never allowed in the house. Uh, if he attempted to go in the house, he was usually either beaten or kicked. He was obviously starved because as the months went on, he became thinner and thinner and thinner. And he just used to roam the streets and I'd met him a couple of times in the street. His coat was really dull, his head drooped, his tail was very low and um, quite a different dog to what you witness today. Teresa couldn't bear it any longer. She thought the dog would die if she didn't do something. So she scooped him up and drove him home. The rescue mission wasn't easy. Teabag was scared of people and ran away as soon as Teresa let him out of the car. So we started a weekend search, day and night, looking for him. Um, we dashed around and eventually I came across somebody who said had seen this dog walking through um, the main street in town and he described him as a really skinny dog who was very timid and I knew that it had to be him. When Teresa found him again, she made sure he wouldn't escape. <laughs> Teresa's devotion has transformed Teabag into a new dog. When I arrive home from work, he goes absolutely berserk. He just gets really excited, and his paws are on my shoulders. He just can't um, contain himself. And this is what is so nice about this dog, is that he's come from this awful background, and he just seems to have forgotten all the bad things that have happened to him. And he loves life, and he loves everybody. Teabag loves playing with Teresa's husband, Andrew, and the family border collie, Branwyn. Surprisingly, greyhounds require less exercise than most dogs. They're happy to spend hours sleeping every day. And they do enjoy their home comforts. There's nothing like a nice doze on the settee, surrounded by pillows.
When Teresa's daughter takes the dogs out to play, Teabag is at a loss. He doesn't even know how to fetch a stick. Probably because he never played as a puppy. Although he's still haunted by his traumatic past, Teabag has to overcome his lingering fears or he won't be able to jump through the ring of fire at the show. OK, Teresa, what we're going to do now is that we're going to build up the dog's confidence gradually. All right? Now, when we do the ramp, we need to make sure that the dog associates it as a positive thing so he enjoys it. All right. OK, then, so when you're ready, handler, set your dog up. Show the motivation and go. Lots of encouragement through there. Very good. Lots of encouragement. That's good. Run on. Run on. That's it. With Teabag, we start off going over small jumps and then building up to the larger jumps, and then eventually we then build it up to jumping through the fire. Oh, you've done very well there, Teresa. Very good. That's very By overcoming each step, the dog's confidence increases, and in turn, his self esteem increases. And what we'll do then is we'll just light the corners just to build it up very gradually, OK? Come on, Em, let's go. As a greyhound whippet cross, Teabag is big for a whippet and small for a greyhound. Greyhounds are renowned for their speed, but they don't have a lot of endurance. Teabag still needs more practice before the show. Teabag does learn reasonably quickly, but there's always that undercurrent of fear. So even though a dog can fully understand that you might want him to do something, the fear in the dog will overwhelm him and he'll want to get away from it. The first show for Teabag will be the hardest show. That's why it's important that the first show for him is a show that he enjoys and isn't intimidated. Well done, Teresa. That was really good. Well, I think that's that's about it now. I mean, I think we should finish on a good note. He's done really well. He's worked very hard today, and uh, I don't want to push it too much, especially after what he's been through. So I think okay. we'll call it a day and uh, finish on a good note. Well done, Teabag. Okay. Good boy. The Rockwood Dog Display Team will be performing at the Care Philly Big Cheese Show, a lively event on the grounds of the village's castle. It's Teabag's first attempt to make the fiery leap in public. You can't predict, especially an animal like him, who is so lacks confidence. Obviously, he's got a lot more than he used to have, but you just never know how he's going to react today. And we'll soon find out. <laughs> Tea bags only practiced in the quiet countryside, so the crowds may make him nervous. The wind picks up and fans the flames, engulfing the rings fully in fire, something tea bags not used to. And the show begins. Martin's decided to save tea bags' debut performance for the very end. Yes. And as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we like to include some of the smaller members of the team, even if it does mean you have to cheat a little bit. It's finally Teabag's turn to perform. This is a dog, a great Martin teams him with Branwyn Teabag. from home now, to, to give him confidence. Now we have Teabag following. Can she do it? Yes, she's done it. Give a big hand for Teabag, a dog, ladies and gentlemen, that only a few months ago was an extremely, very nervous dog. Well done, Teabag. Give a big hand for Teabag. It's done. I've worried about this day <laughs> for I don't know how long. Couldn't sleep this morning, but he's done it. And I'm so proud of him. And that's brilliant. And that's lovely. This is a two-service dog family. Natalie Spruill is hearing impaired. She's an expert lip reader. 
Barrick is her hearing and service dog. Dennis Brühl is also hearing impaired. He relies on his corgi Harris to be his ears. Like Natalie, Dennis reads lips. They're always on duty, 24 hours, 24 seven. So even if they're playing, if the doorbell rings, the microwave goes off, whatever, they are obligated to come and get us, Drop signal everything. us, take us to where the sound is. Harris and Barrick have their yearly recertification test the day after tomorrow. If they don't pass, the couple may have to replace the dogs. Their lives depend on them. The dog's job is to what? alert to sounds. Good girl. Barrick's broad Labrador nose works well to alert Natalie with a nudge when the buzzer signals it's time for her pills. Good girl. To pass their recertification test, Harris and Barrick have to listen up and keep their skills sharp. Dennis and Natalie first met when they got their service dogs. They fell in love, got married, and now the dogs are a key part of the family. How they've affected us individually Girls, has been that I was quite, and I still am, if, uh, I've, I've, I've always been a very introvert. And, uh, and the dogs have made me uh, an extrovert uh, somewhat. Dennis, I think, I think we both have blossomed well, and I think also with Harris, we can't hide in, in the corners anymore because the dog is there, Harris is there, she's in the spotlight. Dennis, 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 Dennis. In the case of somebody calling my name, Harris will alert and telling what? me um, when I give her the command of what? She takes me to the particular sound that I'm having, and in this case, it was the secretary calling my name. Natalie works at a veteran's hospital. Because her hip condition makes moving difficult, Barrick stays close by to help. She's a door opener, an icebreaker. She puts many people at ease. People are drawn to us, and I'm honored to be in her company. She's my best friend. And everything negative that happens, she makes better. She enriches my life more than words could ever express. Harmony in the Spruill household depends on Harris and Barrick passing the recertification test. If one of them fails, they may have to be replaced and the family balance will be upset. The whole family heads to Canine Companions for Independence in Santa Rosa, where they all first met. Good girl. A visit to the CCI vet is part of the recertification test. Hearing dogs need to have their ears examined. Beautiful. Labs need lots of attention and love to feel they're part of the family. This family member is in great shape. Harris is a Welsh Pembroke Corgi. Corgis are sensitive, intelligent, and energetic. I think she looks good. You guys are doing a great job. Her weight looks good. You survived. That wasn't so bad. It's time for the recertification test. The judges prepare to evaluate the dogs. First item, getting out of the car. Service dogs must always wait for their owners to get out first. These tests are very serious. If the graduates don't pass them, then they don't get public certification, which means they're not able to take their dogs out in public. Next test item, the elevator. Again, service dogs must wait for their owners to exit before they do. Harris and Barrick have to show they can obey their owners completely and resist all distractions, even the temptation of French fries. After more testing, it's over. Will Harris and Barrick pass? Here's one of the judges. 
dynamic duo, Harris and Barrick, did great today. I love watching them work together, both the two dogs and the two handlers, and seeing that situation where the uh, owners actually live together, and they just did great today. The dogs are both recertified. This is great news for the whole family. Harris and Barrick get some TLC from a grateful Natalie and Dennis. So much more of a bonus in our lives. You know, it, it brings tears to our eyes when we think of the fact that we have a um, animal that has given us far more than just being an aid, um, has al allowed us to live our lives so much more independent than before. Pyrenees have protected flocks against predators for centuries. They bark to signal attacks, and if challenged, will fight to the death. China, a 10-week-old Great Pyrenees pup, is learning to guard this flock of alpacas. It's a challenging job for her. China's afraid of the dark. Add to that the threat of coyotes and the fact that she's intimidated by the alpacas. Nonetheless, China has to bond with these unusual animals and stay on duty no matter what happens. Glenn Cook and his wife Susan have been breeding alpacas for three years. Their fleece is as valuable as cashmere, making them worth fifteen to forty thousand dollars a piece. Without a competent guard dog, the cooks could lose their investment. We need China um, to protect the alpacas from two things in this area, in this region. Hopefully, she'll scare off any coyotes. But neighborhood dogs are a big threat too. Glenn recently decided to get a guard dog after seeing a coyote in the area. He opted for a puppy rather than a trained adult dog who might not bond with the flock. It's important for China to bond with the alpacas and not only to Glenn's family. Bonding with the alpacas will set in motion her desire to protect them. It will take up to 18 months before Glenn knows if China can do the job. I mean, you probably wouldn't know that it didn't work until it was too late. If, if something actually got in here, hurt one of our alpacas or even killed it, you wouldn't know that she failed. So if that happened, we'd find a home for her somewhere else. Let's see if we can get these boys in. Uh, right now we're trying to teach her that this is her domain. These fences are where she lives, and anything that comes in here shouldn't be here, and she needs to chase it away. Hank, a two-year-old Great Pyrenees, is chief guard dog at Neil Paget's farm down the road. What he's doing now is he, he heard something that disturbed him. He can't see it. So he's standing there barking just to make sure that whatever it was knows that he's there and, and for that to stay away. At nighttime, you'll see this, you'll, you'll see it and hear it all the time. Very comforting to us. We haven't had a loss since we've had Hank here. The Great Pyrenees is named after the mountain range in Europe, where it has long been used as a livestock guardian. The breed is loyal, strong-willed, and instinctively protective. While Great Pyrenees won't tolerate predators, they're gentle and almost maternal with livestock. Adult dogs can grow to a meter high and can weigh up to 200 pounds. She's going right on the fence line. So she's marking her area. That's telling other animals that this is her territory. You're coming across, you're smelling me, this is my home now. So that's why she's going along perimeters. That's good, that's what we want. 
but China's an expert escape artist. She's still small enough to slip under the fence. A guard dog must always keep the herd in sight and consider it their family. The alpacas aren't sure what to make of their rambunctious you know, new relation. Right now they're very curious. They don't know what she is. Uh, the young ones are kind of playing with her now. The uh, pregnant mother or the mothers with uh, babies are actually chasing her off and protecting their babies from her right now. But as she gets used to them and they get used to her, that'll, that won't happen anymore. But darkness is a scary thing for anything, young. Predators don't come around much during the day. So they're really up at night, they're more nocturnal. Um, so she needs to make sure she's not afraid of the dark because that's where she's gonna be patrolling the boundaries, chasing off things that aren't supposed to be here. Um, that's when the bad, bad animals come, so. We'll bring her out at night, walk the perimeter just so she can see where her perimeter is at night. Let her hear different sounds. And things are a little bit different at night. Yeah, at night she's a little bit more timid, uh, a little scared her. Doesn't walk away quite from, from me as far as usual. But that she's, each night she gets a little bit farther and a little bit farther. It'll be a while before China proves herself, but Glenn is optimistic about her future. As every day goes by and she's out here with them, instinct says, this is who my family's gonna be. I need to start watching them, maybe in the beginning it's watching them, watching them, later on it's protecting them. I think she's gonna be a great dog. <laughs>